morning, friends, and welcome to After GMS. I see a lot of you logging on here to our live Facebook feed on the WFMY Facebook account. We have a lot of fun talkers coming up today, so thanks for making us part of your Friday morning. I'm Megan Maleros here in studio. Terrain Kirksey is in Studio B, keeping an eye first and foremost on our forecast. I don't know about you, Terrain. I enjoyed every second of those 50 degree warm and sunny days the past two days. Looks like they're coming to an end though. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be uh, trending downward as far as temperatures are concerned as we head on into the weekend out there right now. We have temperatures basically uh, at or below freezing for just about everyone. 32 Greensboro, 32 Winston-Salem, but I really want to draw your attention to Reedsville and Danville. We have temperatures in the 20s and the reason for that is we have some fog out there right now and with temperatures below freezing and that fog around we have what we call freezing fog. OK, so that just means that the moisture that's in the atmosphere, those little droplets of water that you see when fog has developed, those can freeze on contact with different surfaces, including roadways. So there could be a few slick spots from Reedsville up to Martinsville. So just be careful out that way. Otherwise, we're going to see the cloud cover quickly move on in. We had clear skies in the weather garden just a few minutes ago, but it's going to get cloudy fairly quickly. And then we'll see a chance of uh, rain with the cold front moving in as we go through the day. Maybe even a few snowflakes mixed in with that uh, for folks in Wilkes County and maybe parts of northwestern Surrey County. But for just about everybody, it's just going to be a regular cold rain. And then as that system passes on through, we will uh, see our temperatures really take a tumble for the weekend. So the chance of rain at your house during the day today only around 60 to 70 percent. So most of us will see at least some rainfall, maybe not a whole lot, but some and some spots will uh, stay completely dry. This isn't a very strong uh, system as far as rain is concerned. And then behind it, it gets uh, pretty chilly for Saturday. I think we'll see our high temperatures struggle to make it into the upper 30s to low 40s. We'll have an upper level low passing through that will help the cloud cover to stick around and we'll see those clouds build a little bit through the afternoon with that cold air in place and that will allow for the chance of a few sprinkles, maybe a few snow flurries. No big deal at all. The bigger deal will certainly be the temperatures with windy conditions. It'll feel like it's in the 30s uh, most of the day and then we will see temperatures slowly warm up as we go through the next uh, few days into early next week. Then after that, we're in the mid 50s by the middle to the end of next week. Let's quick look at your seven day forecast. Well, let's face it, it can be a challenge to achieve New Year's resolutions during a global pandemic. But if you want 2021 to be a better year money wise, financial experts say you should consider ditching those bad financial habits like overspending and not planning for emergencies. WFMI News News Candace Rad shares what else you can do to start the new year on the right foot financially. For the most part, New Year's resolutions among Americans haven't changed much over the past years. One of the most common and popular resolutions is still managing finances. In fact, a YouGov survey shows about 44% of adults want to save more money. Financial experts suggest creating a realistic budget is going to give you an action plan and clear a picture of where your money is ending up each month. Budgeting can also help you get out of debt and save. Be honest with yourself about exactly what you think is coming in. Be honest with yourself about what's going out. And that gets kind of tough because if you um, go to Starbucks and get a cup of coffee every day, that's hard to capture in a budget. Those little things that you spend a few dollars a day on that add up to a lot of money by the end of a month. Some other tips include using cash, not credit, no impulse buying, and also you want to make sure that you create an emergency fund for the unexpected. For more details on this story, visit our website, WFMYNews2.com. Well, keep all those tips in mind, especially if you win the lottery tonight. <laughs> there is still no winner for two of the largest lottos in history, and the next drawing is tonight. We want to know if you were to win, what option would you choose? The lump sum cash option or a larger amount over annual payments of 30 years? Let us know in the comments here. Your chances of winning the Mega Millions or Powerball jackpots would be as historic as the jackpots themselves. They're climbing into the top 10 biggest in history. 
The Mega Millions is at $750 million for tonight's drawing. It is the second largest Mega Millions jackpot and the fifth largest in lottery history. Then tomorrow's Powerball is at $640 million. It is ranked as the fifth largest in Powerball history and ninth in overall lottery. We asked you if you were to win one of them, what option would you choose? The cash option payout or the larger payout over 30 years. Let's check out what some of you had texted us this morning. One viewer said cold hard cash, one time payment that would allow him to invest as he sees fit and do everything he wants up front and he'll do this next year, etc. So this viewer Lydia said definitely the lump sum because she's concerned the money won't be there for 30 years payout and her age is also a consideration. Good point, Lydia. This viewer said lump sum and put a roof on house, get heat for the house and a bathroom, then build family houses for people with children. Wow, a lot and, and people coming out of prison, a lot of things on the plate there for consideration if he were to win. So yeah, some, some good options, but overwhelmingly Turan, as I suspected, people are picking the lump sum. Vanessa just texted saying, I'll take the lump sum so I can donate to some organizations with a trusted financial mm -hmm. advisor, of course. Yeah, want to get that financial expert in on that. Joanne said, not even playing, not a gambler. All right, yeah, can't play if you can't win, but I don't blame you, Joanne. Sometimes it's just not worth it. Money doesn't buy happiness. So Wanda said she'd take the long term payout so she could have money down the road unless she got bad news on health and then would want to get it now. Terang Kirksey, we know how you feel. You had a long soliloquy, can we call it that, on the Good Morning Show about why to take the lump sum and how you could really make more than the larger payout of annuity. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you invest it properly and save it properly, you're definitely going to have a higher return uh, than what you would get if you just take the 30 year annuity payment. But I, I mean, I get it, though. You have to be responsible <laughs> for making mm -hmm. sure you don't you know, waste all the money to make sure you make it through that uh, 30 year uh, payout. I can understand if you you know, are bad with money or you just want to make sure uh, that the money will be there. Maybe you take the annuity, but some people uh, had some some good points. You don't know what might happen in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so those payments either might not come or uh, the tax code could change and maybe you will end up having to uh, give a bigger share of those yearly payments to uh, Uncle Sam in the future than you do right now. For me, I'll take the lump sum and just on a very elementary basic level, I would assume that it would, I'd have uh, financial advisors really advising me to be a little bit more complex than this, but you can make just investments in real estate, commercial, and also residential. That will likely give you a higher return than I think the 5% um, return that you get or increase in payment that you get every year with the, um, the uh, yearly payments. Also, you know, you might do some uh, just investment in stock markets, Mutual funds, super easy. They usually follow kind of the ups and downs of the market. You can do that. You would likely get a higher return. I mean, if you average out what the last 10 years of the market is probably somewhere between what, nine or 11% <laughs> return year over year, that's gonna give you more um, in the long run. Or just if you put it in the bank, if you don't trust yourself to, you know, be careful with it, I'd rather have the lump sum and just put it in the bank and do nothing. And if you pick a, high yield, a high return account, that's you know between one and 2%. Um, let's say it's one and a half percent, you put $150 million in there. I used this example earlier, that's like $2 million a year. So yeah. 175, 180 something thousand dollars a month. If you yeah. uh, can't live off of that, I, j I just don't know what to tell you. Now, of course you can't get like a $60 million house, but if you right. didn't have one before, you were just fine. You probably don't need one now. We were joking earlier that you were an honorary financial <laughs> advisor, a meteorologist of many talents, but I agree with everything you said. I'm a big proponent mm. of investing, mm. saving for an emergency fund. If you can, mm. at least even putting just a little bit aside every month can really go a long way mm. in the long haul. The only other consideration I think people would need to take into account in deciding lump sum versus cash payout is, you know, how ready are they to mm -hmm be financially responsible for such a large amount of money. I mean, it's overwhelming for people mm -hmm. to think about the possibility of winning mega millions of dollars immediately. Uh, I mean, your night and day changes. I, I mean, in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. So 
I think for some people that thought of just trying to manage that is so overwhelming that they do decide to take that long term payout, even if it is over mm -hmm. several decades, just to yep. <laughs> mentally manage it <laughs> a little bit easier. <laughs> All right, so a lot of good talkers and comments coming in on this. We will move on to our headlines, but I want you to go ahead and weigh in on our next conversation, which is easy for a Friday. Tell me something good. All right, think about that while we get to your headlines right now. Tonight, some changes to restaurant delivery and pickup go into effect in Guilford County. Here's what you should know. This amended order now stops customers from picking up food or paying for orders inside restaurants after 10 p.m. Starting tonight, all orders must be placed before 10. All delivery curbside pickup and to-go orders then must be taken care of outside the restaurant. The Guilford County Health Department is opening next week's vaccine clinic to people 65 and older. Remember, that's a change from the 75 and older it was earlier this week. This clinic is on Tuesday by appointment only at the Greensboro Coliseum. We have information on our website. Again, registration opens today. In your national headlines, President-elect Joe Biden is proposing an additional $1,400 stimulus checks in his $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan. The plan mentions allocating $400 billion to help vaccinate 100 million people within his first 100 days. He also wants to set aside $440 billion in emergency funding for small businesses. Well, as I alluded, it is my favorite time of week here on the Good Morning Show and on After GMS. Time to just take a deep breath, sit back, relax and reflect on life's many blessings. It can be very therapeutic, especially during these tumultuous times. So I asked you on my Facebook page, Mega Malaris News, and some of you are also weighing in here on this live feed to tell me something good, big or small, that happened in your life recently. Brentwood's son, who is her caretaker, got a raise. Kimberly got a promotion at work. Penny welcomed her new granddaughter January 7th. Charlotte Rose was 8 pounds, 9 ounces. Frank is thankful to wake up to a new day. Leanne said she's down 40 pounds with healthy weight loss. Alice turned 81 on January 5th. Deborah's friend blessed her by buying water and strawberries that she needed. Rosa feels blessed to celebrate her 52nd birthday and Karen got a new puppy. Meet Sam. And some more great comments coming in. Nadine celebrated a birthday. Happy birthday to you. Our Brian is taking mom to get her vaccine. Awesome news. And then we heard from Bobby who said he got a check from the insurance company for damages done to his home from a tree destroying it on October 29th. Mm. Wow, Bobby, I'm glad you finally can get some resolution there to that and hopefully get it fixed ASAP. My tell me something good, which I shared on the Good Morning Show, is that my cousin, who's like a sister to me, is an OBGYN in St. Louis, and she has been treating patients, you know, throughout this crazy year. Some of her patients who are expectant mothers have COVID, and so in order to make sure that they are getting better, she's putting herself at risk caring for them. So last night she was able to get her first dose of the COVID vaccine. She said it went well. She feels great. She's a huge advocate of the safety of the vaccines and encourages you to talk to your doctor about getting one and make sure that you're making the decision that's right for your family with the factual information that is out there and you're not heeding misinformation that is circulating on social media. So that's my tell me something good to What about you? That's the yeah, yours is definitely a good <laughs> one. I'm sure that, you know, again, like we talked about earlier, I'm sure the stress level for her and her family certainly uh, is starting to go down because that's certainly stressful. And we thank yeah. her uh, and, and her husband for uh, what they what they mm -hmm. do um, there on the front lines. Mine is less important <laughs> a lot uh, sillier but i was able to my wife made me a funfetti cake uh this past week i love funfetti mm -hmm. i'll just randomly will get that anytime <laughs> that it's available because like those little uh, pieces of candy or extra sh sugar or whatever in the cake just it, it's wonderful to me uh <laughs> so i love that also um I, I mentioned this, I guess, several weeks ago, but, you know, I got a little coffee grinder and I got coffee beans and I finally figured out the consistency that I need to grind the coffee beans up to put them in this little reusable K-cup type of deal that I can put in the machine and it makes pretty good coffee. So I'm, I'm coming along on my uh, enlightenment on the, in the coffee world. I'm, I'm going to be uh, one of those people one of these days and say, oh, that coffee beans from such and such and it's been roasted for 25 minutes. And that's why it has these different notes of almond and all this other stuff that those people way smarter than me uh, 
do. So I'm on my way now, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, a sommelier of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there there's is. a technical term for that. <laughs> <Just 'cause laughs> this is totally <laughs> random, but do you recommend those reusable K-cups? Because I spend so much money on K-cups, and mm -hmm. I go through them all the time. Do you really think that there's a, a payoff to using the reusable? I, I can tell the difference okay. in the way the coffee tastes, but I will say it's a bit more of a hassle mm -hmm. to have to wash them out. And You know, you have all those coffee grinds you have to get out. What I think I might end up doing eventually, I don't want to spend the money now because I'm cheap, but eventually get a like a French press uh, coffee yes. maker and get like a little, you know, kettle that makes, you know, that heats up the water to whatever specific temperature, because I guess that's a thing too. You need the water at certain temperatures for certain types of coffee. Again, I'm, I'm very new at this, but uh, <laughs> so that's probably uh, in the future, maybe sometime by the summer or something like that. I have that down, but you know, for what it is, I, I do think that the coffee tastes better. Uh, to be honest, um, it's just it's it's more of a hassle. I will admit. Yeah. That. yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we digress. I was just curious, especially because a lot of people are drinking coffee. I'm sure right now at their mm. homes while they're watching our feed. We'll share some more of what your tell me something goods are this week. Wanda said God has blessed her with another day and her feet mm. don't hurt too badly this morning. Joanne had great grandbaby number five. Oh, That's wow. so cool. <laughs> Carol said people have been there for her and helped her out. Sheree is thankful she made it another day. And Carol said two of her grandchildren will be two years old. A lot of things to celebrate. And I think these little blessings sometimes are just huge reminders of you know that we're all here for each other there is good happening all around us even on the tough weeks and so it's helpful to just remember that and celebrate all the good even the little things yeah you know this, sometimes it's the little things mm -hmm. that you know keep keep you going you know the yeah. the the fact that we're even able to think about these things and discuss these things yeah. is, is a blessing in and of itself and so yeah you know when things get hard we just have to keep on pushing and and, and be positive and hope for for better days and so you know just uh, be thankful that you made it to Friday not that not everybody can say that so I'm thankful for that for sure I am too, and I wish I could thank Mother Nature for more yeah. sunshine, but I'm thankful for what she gave us at least the last couple of days. Some rain moving in. Yeah, yeah, we have rain on the way today. That's going to move in for most of us right around midday, and it will continue on through the afternoon. It's not going to rain everywhere, but I do think most of us will see some shower activity, and I can't rule out a few snowflakes mixed in with the uh, rainfall, especially in the foothills as we go right around midday before temperatures warm up a little bit more up that way. Not expecting any accumulation, anything like that. Might just be something nice to see. The rest of us, just the cold rain, high temperatures in the upper 40s to low 50s. It will feel colder than that because it will be a little bit breezy at times. So kind of a chilly day today. And then just downright cold with the capital C on Saturday. Cold, a, um, upper level low will move through. That'll keep some cloud cover around. I think we could see a few sprinkles, a few isolated showers, maybe even a few, uh, Snowflakes here or there, again, that shouldn't be a big deal either. The bigger uh, issue tomorrow will be the temperatures. We'll see our highs, for some of us, not making it out of the 30s. I'm going to put right around 41 degrees to the official high temperature uh, at PTI, but when you factor in the breeze, again, it's going to feel much colder than that. So you'll need to bundle up if you're going to be out and about doing anything on Saturday. Sunday's still kind of chilly, and then temperatures go up from there. We're back in the 50s uh, for the middle to the end of next week. That's a quick look at your forecast. By the way, you reminded Carol that it's Friday and she is excited for that. <laughs> and then Walter said when he hits the lottery, he's going to get you one. I'm assuming he means the French press. Hey, all that right. You I, wanted. So there you go. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. We appreciate you for spending part of your Friday morning chatting with us here on After GMS. Always just a laid back way to celebrate our week and Take a deep breath heading into the weekend. So we'll see you next week on Monday, same time, same place. For now, get out there and get to it and have a nice weekend. Quick note to Anne Antoinette mm -hmm. said she was hoping to use the morning snow as an excuse not to go to exercise <laughs> class. Oh, no. But it sounds like she might get some exercise yeah. shoveling snow later on there you in go. the day. <laughs> Saints head coach Sean Payton got slimed after the playoff win against the Chicago Bears. Growing up as a kid, loved Nickelodeon, always wanted to like be slimed, that was a dream of mine. You know, Stacey, we make slime weekly at my house, so uh, we can help you live out your dreams if you like. We can slime you anytime. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Let's talk lottery fever. So how many of you guys would retire? Oh, definitely. Right.
Yeah. I like working. Yep. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I, I, enjoy, I enjoy what I do, but I would enjoy sitting on a beach every day for the rest of my life a little bit more. First of all, I take care of my family and uh, house hunting in uh, Key West, Florida. Mm -hmm. And I have discovered real quickly that I can't even afford a doorknob on a door <laughs> at a house in Key West. But if I had the lottery, I could. <laughs> oh, did you say Tracy? Oh, did you say my name? Sorry. Oh, Tracy, what do you like? <laughs> oh, Tracy, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Wait, so Stacy and I have similar names, obviously, and we're both pregnant and not paying attention 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just being honest, like, I literally phase in and out, like, throughout the morning. <laughs>